Hey everyone, Felipe here. Welcome to another Tower of Saviors card review video. In this video, I'll be taking a look at one of the jackpot cards of the new Demon Slayer collaboration seal, Nezuko Kamado. So Nezuko is a fire demon card and her leader skill has the following effect. When the team has only humans and Nezuko or Tamayo and Yushiro, team attack times 6.5, HP and recovery times 1.6, when you have Tanjiro or switch Tanjiro in the team, you have an additional 1.6 attack increase. Additionally, by dissolving race rooms, team attack times 2 additionally. Damage received, minus 25%, and if the enemy is a demon, the damage received will be decreased to minus 50%. Overall, I think this leader skill is pretty simple. It is something that would expect a non-collaboration seal to have, but it is still pretty... a uh, still pretty good leader skill in my opinion. You have quite a bit of attack increase and you also have damage reduction which will increase your tankiness especially since you have the 1.6 HP and recovery uh, buff. Let's take a look at her team skills because usually they will complement the leader skill even better. So when the leader is Nezuko and when the leader and ally is Nezuko or the ally is Tanjiro you add 3 times the attack of all humans to the attack of Nezuko. This is going to be really good because you will be running a mono-human team other than Nezuko, which means that you will get all that attack added to Nezuko. Attributive runes possess 25% of heart runes, and heart runes also possess 50% effect of attributive runestones. Uh, additionally, the first round of fatal damage received in the battle will not lead to your defeat, which is going to be really good because it allows you to survive hits from enemies that are supposed to kill you in one shot. Every time Nezuko attacks an enemy or receives an attack of enemy, she gets a, uh, the enemy gets a blood mark to the max of 5 blood marks, and for each layer of blood mark, Nezuko's attack increases by 1.5 additionally, and so the max of 5 layers of blood mark will give you a max of 5 times uh, 1.5 attack increase. When a team member is hypnotized, recover 50% HP each round. This is going to be very situational. We've only seen hypnotized skills once, and that is during the hypno stage. So this tells me that this Demon Slayer collaboration is going to have more hypnotized enemies, but this will be more situational, allowing to recover HP when your team members are hypnotized. Additionally, the, she has some stat boosting team skills. So Tanjiro, uh, 1.6 HP attack and recovery, Senitsu, HP attack and, attack and recovery times 1.3. Damage dealt on Nezuko will be dealt, dealt on enemies or demon enemies times 2. So this team skill is really nice. It gives her a lot of attack thanks to the first team skill where 3 times the attack of humans will be given to her. And you also ignore fatal damage. However, there is no way of you creating race rooms through her uh, team skill. So this third effect on her leader skill will be harder to trigger. So you won't be able to launch a times two team attack that consistently since she does not generate race rooms on her own. That being said, she does increase her own attack and also um, you get a the blood mark attack increase, which also further increases your attack. So her playstyle will most likely will will revolve around herself dealing the most damage since she gets that much damage, and the rest of it will be. You will want to have more uh, a way to generate race rooms in order to reach this times two team attack. Additionally. There are no runestone possession effects in order to uh, give Nezuko more attacking runes, except for heart runes. So even if you dissolve a lot of attributive runes, you will not have attacking runes if you do not dissolve heart runes or fire runes. So her playstyle will be will revolve around dissolving fire runes as well as heart runes. Additionally, she is very tanky because she will give a lot of damage reduction, especially if the enemy are demons. But overall, I think this leader skill 
is not as good as the other jackpot cards in the in the seal and she will most likely be suited to be a member card for a Tanjiro team. That being said, her leader skill does give itself to... It, her leader skill is really viable because it is comparable to a non-collaboration jackpot card leader skill. So if you are lacking any of the other jackpot cards, she can be a really good leader to have, especially if you have a a good amount of human cards in your inventory that can support her with utility or generating race runes and heart runes. In terms of team building, like I said, she has access to entire human pool, so definitely have Tanjiro for the extra 1.6 attack on her leader skill and 1.6 attack on her team skill. But if you have a Tanjiro, you might as well be running Tanjiro as a leader instead. So. Yeah, well, that uh, that is going to be a trade-off. Uh, you can also add the non-jackpot card. Um, what is it? The dark jackpot card. I forget what her name is. Um, let's see. I forget what her name is. I think it's Tsuyuri. Kaori Tsuyuri. Not Shinobu. The other dark card. Uh... Kanao Tsuyuri, since Kanao Tsuyuri will generate a lot of heart runes, which will allow Nezuko to launch more attacks since heart runes are attacking runes for Nezuko. So yeah, in terms of team building, any human that helps you generate base runes, in, so for example Ersa from the Fairy Tail collaboration, and cards that can generate a lot of heart runes in order for you to launch more, um, have more attacking runes. So yeah, overall, her leader skill is pretty good. But it will be a little bit underwhelming compared to the other jackpot cards in the seal. So at least for this seal, I would say run the other ones and run Nezuko as a member. But if you want to have fun uh, using Nezuko, I think she can also be a really viable leader. However, like I said before, in order to reach the max multiplier, you need a Tanjiro in the team. And if you have Tanjiro, you might as well be running Tanjiro as a leader instead. Well, let's take a look at her active skill. We have a CD4 active skill. For two rounds, ignite all enemies to change their attribute into fire. Deal fire damage as much as 50, 500 times the character's attack to all enemies each round. And extend room stone movement time regardlessly by 5 seconds. And turn dark runes into fire and light runes into enchanted water runes. So CD4 is going to be a really fast skill. For two rounds, um, you can actually have this effect for two rounds, which means that if you run two Nezukos, you can have infinite. Um, you can keep this effect active um, infinitely since once the two rounds are over, you can activate the next one, then last for two rounds, and then you activate the next one, etc., etc. But this is the reason why I think she also she is better as a member because even her active skill doesn't give you race runes for her leader skill. So it's a, uh, yeah, in order to reach the best attack multiplier, you need to run other team members. So I think she will be more suited to be a member card, at least for a Tanjiro team. Uh, since you don't wanna be relying too much on cards that need to generate race runes and if she cannot generate her own race runes. But yeah. Uh, back to her active skill, CD4 is really fast, this is going to be really good. Igniting enemies, always nice, especially if you have a enemy that only takes damage from its weakness attribute, or puzzle shields that are annoying, or reducing your damage if they are not ignited. Additionally, deal fire damage as much as 500 of the character's attack, this is also going to be really nice. This will not kill anyone. But because Nezuko has her own attack increase, this is going to be a good chunk of damage, in my opinion. 5 extra seconds of movement time is going to be amazing. The more movement time, the better your board. And this will benefit herself as well as a Tanjiro team, since you want to get high combos in a Tanjiro team if you have um, the active skill uh, effect activated. Additionally, 
effect 4 and 5, you generate water runes and fire runes. Uh, this effect is more tailored to a Tanjiro team, honestly. So this is another reason why she is indispensable for a Tanjiro team, because you are generating attacking runes for Tanjiro. So I think Nezuko definitely get one copy of her because in order to give Tanjiro the best team possible, you you want to have Nezuko in the team just because she will help you generate attacking runes and also bypass igniting and give you more extra movement time and at CD4 that is going to be a pretty fast active, active skill that you can activate. But yeah. In other, other team compositions, I think any team that can fit a demon member so or a fire member, so Tsuyo, Baal, etc. will be good um, options for a Nezuko team, uh, or Nezuko to be in as a member. But yeah, overall, I think Nezuko is a really good card. Uh, yeah, I think she is a really good card. Her leader skill is viable, but a little bit underwhelming compared to the other members. But it is still, it still seems fun to play, honestly. So, but so I will try it out. But I do think that running the other three jackpot cards as leaders will be better. Especially her active skill is more suited to be a member skill for Tanjiro instead of buffing her own leader skill as well. So yeah, that's all I had to say about this card. Please let me know in the comments if I missed anything or if I said anything wrong. And as always, stay tuned on my YouTube channel for more Tower of Saviors content. For now, stay safe, stay healthy, and I will see you later. Bye everyone!